How are we feeling today? Yeah, good? Alright, so I'm going to follow David. You must always follow a good leader. So let's do a little bit of stretching ourselves, yeah? So can I request all of you to please stand up? Very simple, don't worry. I'm not as tough as David was. Okay, um, close your eyes, very sincerely. Don't look with one eye. Really shine both your eyes. Stretch your right hand in front of you. Yeah? Turn towards your right. Again towards your right. Come back towards your left. And then towards your right. Now please open your eyes. And look around the room a little bit. Are we all in the same direction? No? I have the same set of instructions for everyone. What happened that we all turned to some other side? Yeah? Come back, sit down please. Yeah? Just connect back to this little exercise in a moment. But really glad to be here and thank you uh, for having me here. It was an honor to listen to the others. Uh, I come from this organization which is known as Mars International India. Very little about this quickly. A lot of billion dollar brands that we have. You would be very familiar with some of them. Um, we have acquired Ripley's a couple of years back and Royal Canin, a Fran France based company in pet care. So we are leaders in pet care and uh, snack food uh, among the top 500 fortune companies, privately led company, run by the Mars family, fourth generation in operation and they are doing a great job as leaders. Uh, we recently got the great place to work at number 18th position in the uh, up to 1000 uh, employees category. So we are really happy it was the first time to test the waters and I think we felt really happy that we made it there. Fantastic practices, but what I'm going to be doing today is talking about the various experiences I've had in, in different organizations. I've had the privilege of working in some really, really good places. Um, currently with Mars International, prior to that with IBM, I worked with TCS, and I worked with the Navratna Public Sector in the Sun Petroleum. So I've got a lot of perspective of different organizations within India, outside and uh, feel very privileged to share some of the things that I have learned over a period in time. Yeah? Um, so, we did this little exercise where we stood up and people moved in all directions. Yeah? The instructions were the same, but I don't know what happened. Everyone turned towards different sides. More often than not, a leadership challenge seems that way. Do you agree or no? I think that's what really happened here uh, because I think that's what the meaning, listening and agreeing is two different things. Uh, some people were listening and some people were agreeing because what they were saying. Yeah. So I was agreeing completely and I was listening also, but maybe some people were only listening and they were not agreeing. So that's where the Thank you for that input. More often than not, we get the same set of instructions, but we do all kinds of different things. And the leadership dilemma is how to handle an aggregate of people who think that they, uh, they are doing the right thing, but you know what the result is. Yeah? So what's the need really for leadership development? We have already spoken about it, but quickly, if there's anything which could be a true competitive advantage, it's got to be your whole learning process and your leaders. Yeah? That is not always replicable. And that's why it's is such a great company when it comes to leadership development. And I really appreciate all that you shared here. Yeah? Inimitable qualities of an organization. You can, you can imitate a product. A chocolate can be imitated. A food can be imitated. An IT solution can be imitated. But what can't be imitated is the way leaders think. And leaders are people who actually lead themselves, others, and situations. 
and any organization which has got that piece right, I think has got a good competitive advantage. Continuously changing, challenging business scale uh, of the organizations. You are all more than familiar. Every second day, I'm sure you have a different challenge thrown in front of you in terms of how to deal with your folks. Aggressive growth in companies. Suddenly, you are a $1 billion company aim to become a $10 billion company in about five years. How do you run that? Yeah? Big, big ambition. And then you need a lot of hand-holding, a lot of support, and whatever else it takes to get there. Changing top leadership, that also actually calls for a uh, need for leadership development. Because the whole philosophy might change sometimes. Expansion and in fact shift to emerging markets. I think David uh, talked about that briefly about how emerging markets are becoming really, really important in the landscape today. Yeah? Uh, I worked in this organization, a great organization called IBM. So I was telling you about this great experience I had working with this organization called IPM, okay? And looking after the leadership development function for the emerging markets. Great organization did great things in the western part of the world, but when it came to the east, it was a lot of confusion to begin with. Different cultures, different ways of working, different languages, different thinking, and different, uh, you know, cultural orientation of people, okay? So the big challenge was, how do you make leaders who are going to be very culturally intelligent, if I may say so, high cultural quotient, yeah? So that is a big, big challenge that we had in front of us. So it's not as easy to say that yes, you know, the marks come from the emerging markets, so let's just go there. It's not that easy to do that. Uh, I'm sure my colleagues will agree that, you know, getting people Planting them from somewhere else is not going to be the solution in another place. So how do you sort of transfer knowledge quickly so that they come on scale? Yeah? And finally, the big challenge in fact is in terms of virtual teams to manage taxi workplace. So leadership, how do you do this now? Till yesterday you had this boss who would call you in front of you every time he or she needed to have a discussion. And now we've got teams spread all over the place in different countries. Yeah, in my assignment, my boss was in Peru. My colleagues were all over the place. You know, how do you sort of connect the time, the understanding, the communication, the way you reach out, and at the end of the day, you still need to get that message right. So, really, really good reasons why we need to invest in this. So, I made an application of what companies do, and I'm going to talk about that kind of conversation a little bit on that. What have we done, actually? We have a culture of Okay. Uh, Peter said we talked about many organizations in a big way. Uh, we talk about talent mastery in the current place where I am. But really it's about building a culture of leadership. Yeah? Create your own leadership development frameworks. Yeah? You really need to do this because what's peculiar to you is really peculiar to you. It can't actually be transplanted from somewhere else. You would have read lots of books where people have shifted jobs and actually failed in the new organization. Not because they were bad people, but just that it's a whole different ball game. Yeah? So how do you sort of get used to the fact that you need something which is unique to your organization? Yeah? Um, and then make associates more responsible for their own development. And this was touched upon uh, by Rachita as well, that it's my business as much to get there. Build complementary programs to aid leadership development and pipeline creation. So let's see how this was done. Establish and refresh a uh, core set of competencies. Most organizations end up doing this. Yeah? So if I talk about IBM, they've got 10 competencies that are listed, and this gets reviewed every two to three 
years for the relevancy in the market. Yeah? And then, for you have new competencies. It's not just to have them. You, you need to use them everywhere. When you hire, so what are the processes? When you hire, okay? When you manage performance, when you do learning and development over there, when you do career planning, succession planning, every aspect which touches the associated employee in the organization must embed these competencies. And that's how you reinforce this again and again. I used to often wonder in IBM, why there's such a military focus in terms of, uh, you know, military execution and focus in terms of rolling out the programs, because we used to go to thousands of leaders. You really need it, yeah? Sometimes it can get very, very boring, but just imagine the dilemma of an organization which wants to have the same line of thought across in terms of what they want to do. That's not easy, my friends, yeah? This is the IBM Leadership Development Framework. Some of you may be very familiar with this. They evolved this. There's this beautiful HDR article that says, Leadership Run Amok, yeah? IBM as an organization became very individualistic and competitive in the early 2000. And then they realized that this is not going to help grow. After the great job done of revival in the 1990s, the company again started promoting. And that's when they realized, no, we need to come back and do something which impacts people in a very positive way. And so it said, leader behavior impacts the employee experience, which impacts the business results. And it happens in the framework of values, proper social responsibility and environment influences. You can't actually get any of these out, yeah? So embedded leadership competencies in every leadership program. Sometimes I used to wonder, is the same stuff coming in different ways? Yeah? But when you look back and think, there's a value to doing that because you're reinforcing the same message again and again and again. And then uh, some of the speakers talked about uh, you know, leaders teaching leaders to role modeling, mentoring, and coaching. Some of the greatest organizations in the world have invested time in building people. Yeah? It just doesn't happen with your N, which is your classroom programs. It has to happen by looking at people, looking at role models, and helping them develop. So any organization which refuses to put in that amount of time, you can safely assume you're never going to be on the learning curve. Yeah? A quick point about the mass associate concept, and this is peculiar to this company. We don't call our employees employees, we call them associates. And when you say associate, what do we mean actually? Associates maximizes the return on personal investment, personal competence, personal contribution, personal recognition and reward. He or she is a part of this uh, co-creation of wealth and prosperity and happiness. In fact, the HR uh, scorecard says we are here to create happiness. Yeah, we don't talk about wealth here. And then, organization, of course, in its turn, has to do whatever it has to to build efficiency, quality, etc. And that happens within the five principles. Now, any leader to succeed in Mars has to understand this concept. That I'm not a boss. We are not an office. Yeah? We don't have cabinets. Nobody actually knocks anybody's role to get in. So my MD, to the last person in the shop floor, we all sit in the same place. Yeah? And that makes a big difference in the way you communicate. Now, are you ready for it? When I hire, I need to make sure that someone is comfortable with, with the setup like that. Otherwise, it can actually make you feel pretty naked and exposed. Yeah? That worries. So how do you ensure that people fit into your culture to go walloping on what you want to do? Most organizations have integrated leadership development programs, and really, people who have invested quite a bit would know that. Uh, IBM, 60,000 leaders to train, 30,000 plus in emerging markets. So you have your models in terms of who goes for functioning skills, who goes for leadership skills, and someone talked about using technology for temporary learning techniques. Yeah? What are some complementary programs? Uh, these are programs where people are sent on assignments to different countries, and they learn about the social diaspora so that they develop the cultural uh, intelligence within them. Competency weeks, you pick up different subjects and get people to go through that. It's networking plus learning. Uh, the GM schools, GM managers are big people who actually run the business, so how do you get them there? Management trainings, body leader programs, whatever. And then leadership reviews, which happen, and a good amount of time is spent across the world reviewing the top uh, high potential people in the organization. Diversity, uh, Rajita talked about it, I'm not going to speak more. And then focused leadership teams in terms of innovation, 
cultural adaptation, etc. And in fact, key universities and academics. So, a lot of things add up to make the whole. Now, this is one of the challenges in this slide off, right? Uh, very young leaders leading a very young team. That's the problem in emerging markets. How do you address this? Yeah? Who's going to lead who is the big question here. Dilution of principles and values and lasting the first organization. This is one fear most big organizations have. That can I be the same organization in India versus uh, Brazil versus Brussels or wherever it may be? Which is the best way to lead? The Eastern or the Western way? Are we simply implanting everything Western without understanding the need that we have a great tradition here which we also need to leverage? Is non conventional learning encouraged enough? Storytelling? Is it encouraged enough? Yeah, or we only go for those very structured programs. And then mass production versus customized offerings. I just briefly mentioned about that. Which one to go? I don't know. But both of them have to the value. So it's a bit dilemma to decide which way to go on this. And finally, uh, is enough attention paid to the 70 and the 70 to 2010? Yeah? That's really the big challenge. So that's what I have to share from here. Thank you.